Hello fellow Rosarians. I wanted to talk to you today about getting your gardens ready for winter and dormancy for roses. So, you know, I think I've, I've seen Jason say it in his videos and it, was, it made me chuckle when he was walking around and he said, you know, these modern roses have no common sense. They will keep on blooming straight through the winter. And I'm going to link um, an article to the American Rose Society uh, that they put out talking about that same fact that roses have been bred to repeat bloom. And with that, oftentimes we're going to see them bloom all the way through the winter. Is that a bad thing? No, it's not. Um, it is something that we just get to enjoy. Is there a way for us to force them to go to sleep? into dormancy? The answer is no. You cannot force a rose to go into dormancy. And sometimes I'll see where people say, you know, I'm going to stop clipping my roses so that they will go dormant. Think about all of the roses that are at, you know, McDonald's or in communities where they're not being maintained. If simply not clipping them, force them to go into dormancy, they would be dormant like immediately <laughs> because they are not maintained as well as we're maintaining them in our yard. So roses being clipped will not force them to flush new growth. What forces them to flush, flush new growth is fertilizer. And we all stopped doing our fertilizer six weeks prior to our frost date. So let's make sure that we're still adhering to that calendar. And if you are adhering to that calendar, your rose is going to do, go dormant when it's darn well ready. It will make the decision that it is ready. In my case, in my garden, you're going to see that I have stopped clipping my roses. It's not because I'm trying to help them go dormant. I have stopped clipping my roses because I want to see which roses produce hips. Oftentimes we know that a rose um, is supposed to produce hips and I could certainly mark those. But some roses I find aren't supposed to produce hips and they do. For those of you that do not know what hips are, hips are little berries. So as the, um, after the bloom, let me take this one off here and show you. Um, you know how normally you are left with a, a bloom that has expired, something like this. If I were to leave this on the shrub and I take all these petals off here, you are left with something like this, okay? And if I were to leave this on the rose bush, it will push all of its energy towards making this a seed. So what that does for nature, allowing your rose to go to seed or to hip, is it's going to feed the wildlife during the winter. Um, we could certainly make jams and jellies and you know all kinds of things with it. Um, but I am having hips on my roses because I want to not only have something beautiful, hopefully they'll be red, but they may be yellow or orange. Um, so I want it to look pretty and have that winter interest. And I'm also hoping that it will feed the wildlife. So that's why I am letting the rose hips stay on my, my shrubs, but I'm not trying to force them into dormancy. So I have been gardening roses now for over 25 years. And and up until the last couple of years when it was time for winter, I would shear them or cut them all the way down 12 inches. And I would be doing that in November. And I would take them all the way down and I would remove the leaves and I would call it done and get a jump start on the spring that I have already taken down the canes. What I have learned since then is that you really only want to worry about taking down the height of the rose to a manageable level. So do you see this one back here right now? I see that rose needs to be cut down and I take them all down to about waist high. And the reason why I do that this time of the year is because I have so much wind coming off of the river. And so I wanna make sure that they're not snapping in the wind, but you want to keep that extra length up. So let's look at these right now. So do you see this is coming up? All of these are coming up to about waist high and I'm gonna leave them at this height through the entire winter, unless it gets some kind of rogue growth like that, that I'll cut off. I'm just gonna let them stay this height. 
So why do we do that? Uh, we leave them this height instead of taking them all the way down because we anticipate that the winter is going to damage um, a portion of the roses. So they are sacrificial lambs, basically. You leave them knowing that it doesn't matter if a frost comes and snaps the first eight inches, 10 inches, 12 inches of the rose, because we're going to take down the rose in the spring, just prior to it coming out of dormancy. And we are gonna take it down to that, you know, 12 inches, 14 inches, whatever height that we're looking at. And we're gonna clean it up and we're gonna remove all of the canes that have been damaged. Um, I am continuing to take care of black spot leaves. So as I see them, I'm going to pluck them off. If I'm leaving the hips, then I have to expect that I'm going to have a lot of petals on the ground. And I want to get the petals out and the leaves by using my leaf blower just to make sure that overwintering, I'm not having spores, fungus from the leaves or the petals in the soil. I just want to give it its best chance for um, spring. So we are going to clean the beds just like we would during the spring. Um, I'm leaving the blooms on. I'm not deadheading anymore, which is going to drive me crazy because, you know, I'm constantly going by and snapping all of the the leaves that have, I mean, all of the petals that have expired. So just seeing that on there drives me crazy. Um, but if you wanted, if you're like me and it does drive you crazy and you don't care about hips, then clip them off. You're not going to affect the rose's ability to be able to go into dormancy if it drives you crazy and you just want to take off the expired bloom. Uh, let's see what else we are doing. Um, <laughs> And so it's funny reading the ARS article. It says semi-bad advice. Semi-bad advice is making sure that you remove all of the leaves from the rose bed because they will reinfect your roses with diseases in the spring. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to change my thinking on that. Um, it says picking up dead leaves from the rose garden may indeed make the garden look better, but it will not reduce the disease in your garden next year. Most rose diseases overwinter on the canes, either as a fungal lesion or spore. So I'm not sure um, if I can go along with that. I like everything else in the article and I'm on board, but I have to make sure that I'm cleaning my beds all the time. And I would never let, you know, leaves just drop into the bed and hope for the best. Um, I want to make sure that there's no doubt in my mind that I've done everything that I can. The other thing that I'm doing is I am making notes for myself of things that need to move that they've either, uh, they, they have outgrown their place. Maybe I didn't dig them deep enough and that will be my opportunity to take care of that um, once they go dormant. So start making those notes for yourself. We are going to remove borers and um, I shared with you a video recently of a borer that was in one of my roses and I did not seal the cane. And I got a lot of advice that I really do need to consider sealing them. For whatever reason, the borers are much worse this year than they have been in prior years. So I have started um, going through and removing and it takes a lot of time because once you have cleaned out the all of the black spot leaves, you can get a real good look at everything inside that rose um, for borers and normal dieback and things that you want to address. Just make sure that you've got your container with your alcohol to keep your uh, clippers in and you're looking at each cane to see, did a borer go in here? And what's ridiculous is that twice um, earlier today while I was out taking care of that, I snipped off and I kept on going a little bit deeper till there was a green pith. And I'll show you a video of that here. Okay, and I'm going to cut this while I'm in here. It looks like um, some dieback. So now that one looks good. But you see, I still have something here. It's not clear pith. Still. Ah, so this tells me that they've been able to make it all the way into here. But now it's clear. I've taken it all the way back. So after I was, you know, finished with that video, 
bees came out of one of them. I nearly died. I screamed because I'm not used to it. Normally I just clip and you know, I don't see what's in there and I'm happy just to put it in the trash and keep moving. But a bee actually came out and then he was upset about me taking his home, but too bad. <laughs> You're not boring in my roses. And another one, it looked like some other kind of crawling insect came out. I don't know what it was, but it was very unsettling. But I'm determined to go around and I'm going to um, take your advice and I'm going to try the sealer for the canes and I'll report back to you in the spring and let you know how they did through the winter. So besides dealing with that, the one thing that I want you to take peace in is if you have to take off a cane that a borer has um, made its home, then take a look at it and let's start thinking about if that's a cane that you can propagate because we all want to learn how to propagate. So it's that saying of um, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. So um, I'm always sad when I have to remove a cane because of a borer, but then I look at it and say, is this a cane that I can propagate? So that's something that you can think about. Um, so other than that, you guys, that is it. We are winding down now. Um, for winter. There is just enjoy the garden. Take down the height a little bit. Go ahead and leave those petals on if you're interested in seeing if it uh, will produce hips. And let the rose go dormant when it's ready. And it will, hopefully. <laughs> and if not, it will make it through the winter just fine because they have been bred for that and you get to enjoy those blooms. So thanks so much for watching me and I will see you in the next video.